Hey, what's up guys? Little man with a big opinion here. And in today's video, uh, for starters, uh, I'm going to let you know that when I hit 3,000 subscribers, uh, I'm going to do a survival kit, uh, EDC kit giveaway. And... I have a couple of options for where I'm going to put them in. Uh, so this is going to be like pocket stuff. Uh, or more geared towards that, you know, how many useful items can you squeeze into a, you know, small container. So something this size. You know, what can I fit in here to make, you know, my survival situation better? Uh, this one was a little sewing kit that, you know, everything that you got that came in it right here. Uh, so tape measure, thimble, 30 needles, some string, some pins. But this tin, about the same size as what the Altoids would be, except maybe an inch taller. Um, uh, but that's the whole point of this video, is also not getting sucked into those, you know, you know, this survival knife or this survival axe that, you know, has everything you need to survive in the hilt of it. And I bring that up <clears throat> partially because I bought this at a garage sale. Fairly big knife. I mean, takes up most of my arm. And it's Chinese garbage. You know, it's fairly sharp because they probably bought it because it's a big knife. And it was cool. You know, the serrations on the back are very sharp, but probably wouldn't stay sharp for very long. And it's very difficult to resharpen. And you can unscrew the hilt. Uh, the most useful thing about this whole thing is the fact that it's got a compass. Uh, you know, a little rubber O-ring. And you can see in there that the knife, which the camera probably doesn't pick it up very well, is it's got a bolt and it's got a bolt going through right here. So not full tang um, would fall apart very easily uh but the hilt is hollow and it's aluminum and this was probably marketed as a survival knife they stuffed some matches in it maybe stuffed some fishing hooks in it and you know a band-aid uh maybe a little signal mirror something like that uh, and it's got a nice little sheath that you can wear on a belt. And this knife was probably sold for 30 or $40. When in reality, you know, the most expensive thing is probably the stamped steel blade. And their profit margins were probably extremely high. Uh, and this stuff happens all the time. This one was given to me by my grandma probably when I was 15. Uh, this one does not have, the smaller one does not have the luxury of a pin going through right there. It only is held on by a nut on the inside and very loose. And it's a very difficult nut to retighten. Uh... The serrations on it are a little bit better. No sheath. Uh, and it's a lot more, you know, ergonomical, at least for someone my size. Not, you know, big and intimidating. And it also has an end that unscrews much smaller inside. Uh, it did have a compass at one point, but I think I broke it probably when I was... 
16. Uh, no O-rings, so the stuff in here is not really watertight. Uh, and the stuff that I have had in it for years, and this is the stuff that came with it. It's one, two, three, four. There's five hooks. Uh, and probably 50 yards of string at most. Not even that. Probably 20 yards of string. <clears throat> and it had this little bundle of matches, which probably don't work anymore. I never had a reason to use them. It's literally five matches. The strip from like a, a box. Uh... And one sewing needle. And then it had some wire that I never really understood the purpose of this when I was younger. But you can make a snare with it. Uh, and I don't remember there being anything else in it. And my grandma probably spent... 20 to 30 dollars on this thing and its quality is non-existent um and that 30 dollars could have gone towards something else and so it is of my opinion that anytime you're doing something like this uh it should be set up for you or by you, for you, in your situation, and what you want it for. Because, I would be honest here, there's not, you know, much that can fit in these. You know, there are people that are making these micro kits that are making them seem like, if you've got that, you can conquer the world. And it will help you in a lot of regards. Uh, you know... Having this over the person that has nothing is a lot better than having nothing. Uh, but this shouldn't be supplemented for a bug out bag. It shouldn't be supplemented for a get home bag. Uh, I think they make awesome Christmas presents. I think they make awesome getting started and prepping presents. Uh, I think they're awesome little boxes that can go in your kids or maybe older family members' backpacks or purses or cars or whatever. Uh, because you're not going to expect your kid to carry 20 pounds of prepping stuff to school to make sure they can get home. Uh, and you're not going to expect, you know, your elderly family members to be carrying all that much uh and then so for like for the longest time uh, i like to wear you know cargo shorts or cargo pants so i have at least a third pocket i had an altoids container that stayed in my pocket and it's stuff to start a fire uh a little bit of first aid stuff uh and I mean, its biggest thing was a peace of mind factor for me. Uh, and so I'd like to take all the information that I have, share it with y'all, and then I'm going to be on the lookout for a bunch of small tins and stuff like this. And I'll start making these. And I just created uh, an Instagram account. Uh, and my thought process with that is when I make one of these kits that I think is up to my standard, uh, I'll create some sort of store for them. But the very first one is going to be a giveaway uh, as soon as we hit 300 subscribers. And so I'll ship it anywhere in the U.S., uh, I haven't ever done any of the like random comment generators, but the thought process is when we hit 300 subscribers, uh, the next video, you know, you comment on it, 
subscribe to the channel, uh, and I'll do a random comment generator picker. Uh, but, so, things that I'd like to put into one of these kits. Standard items that I think everyone should have. A compass. Uh, you know, it's nice knowing sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Uh, but there are certain times of day where that's kind of difficult. And you don't always know where you're going to be when the crap hits the fan. So I think some sort of compass will be perfect. Um, I think <clears throat> stuff to start a fire. Whether that's a magnesium stick, ferrocene rod, flint and steel. Matches, a small lighter, anything like that. Uh, you know, that's kind of up to you and your preference. Uh, so, I think that is something fairly important to have. And I'll start picking up and showing these items that I have. But some of them I don't have in front of me, and I'll just talk about it. So, again, these items are in no particular order. And for me personally, some of them don't go in the tin because they already just go in my pocket. <clears throat> and so... Like an everyday carry knife, you know, it's got a clip, it would go in my pocket. Now, if you're thinking about something for a kit like this, still a knife, it's like a $5 knife, and it's extremely small. Um, the greatest thing that I use this knife for is when I'm on Boy Scout camping trips, and I'm doing just whittling, sitting in camp, that's it's... <clears throat> biggest purpose for me uh but in a prepping situation we also have flathead screwdriver and a bottle cap opener and then it's got a fairly useless pair of scissors i say fairly useless uh but that's just my personal opinion and this one unfortunately does not have the tweezers and the pick in it like the Swiss Army Knife version of this, which is a couple dollars more, I would lose the key ring. Unless you wear pants that you can clip this onto. But I will say that this top piece is awesome. This, not so awesome. I just bent, bent it, just doing that. But this is something that could go inside of this tin. I saw it serves multiple purposes and you're not breaking the bank. Uh, the fishing line stays for me and the hooks. Tie this off to a stick, find you some worms, and you're good to go. I lose the matches. I just, I'm not that big of a proponent for it. When I can have, this is a money clip lighter, but I also clip this clip just to my pants, just like the knife. You know, it's one of the jet lighters. Uh, you know, this is as useful until it runs out of fuel, just like these are as useful until you deal with something wet or they break or you just run out. I think for the practicality purposes, you'll get a lot more uses out of a lighter than the number of matches it takes for you to carry. Uh, a ferrocene rod is a good option, and it's a good skill to have. Um, and it takes up less room than this, and you don't even need to carry the steel with it if you're carrying your pocket knife. Uh, in a lot of cases, the back end of the knife works just fine as your steel for it. Uh, but one of the things that comes to my mind is <clears throat> uh, the Jack London short story. 
And I think it was called The Fire. But I'm drawing a blank on its name. So that's one of those things that, you know, he died from exposure. Uh, because he couldn't get his fire going quick enough. And, you know, there's there's more to the story. But I'm going for the fastest way to start a fire. If this is compromised, I mean, when we're working with something as small as this, <clears throat> there's not all that many, uh, like all that much room to follow the idea of two is one and one is none. Uh, but <clears throat> the next thing on the cheap end is just taking a small, uh, small pencil that you, you've used before, uh, or breaking one in half for the sake of this video and just picking each half. I did wrap about eight inches of duct tape around this pencil just as more of a use. It's not adding too much of a profile. Uh, and it's got its uses as well. It can be cut into strips and turned into some sort of cordage. Uh, it can be used as a bandage or, you know, it's duct tape. It'll hold anything together. Uh, but with the pencil, you do, <clears throat> again, for a kit this small, you want to have at least one sheet of paper that you just fold up nice and neat. Uh, you know, the higher end idea of this and, you know, it was developed for the military and I've got some of them around here somewhere is the right in the rain pads and the right in the rain pins. Uh, but if we're trying to keep it uh, lower cost but still covering needs, then, you know, a regular old pencil will work just fine. Don't need to bring a pencil sharpener because you got the pocket knife. Alright, uh, you need some sort of light source, smaller flashlight. Again, this is kind of one of those items, like this flashlight, it's just one that I grabbed. It's too big for this container. Uh, I think I've got another one in this drawer that is too big for this container. And it's going to be too big for most of these containers. Uh, so, having a small pin light to stick inside of here would be extremely useful. Uh, and that's where I know I have it sitting on this desk somewhere. Oh, that's where this guy comes in. Because it's got the compass, like I want a compass. It's got a whistle. Uh, it's got a small pin light on the end of it. It's got a thermostat that says it's 76 in this room, which is probably a little off. Uh, I don't, I haven't tried doing a fire with this magnifying glass, uh, but I don't have extremely high hopes of it. Uh... But it's got a nice size signal mirror as well. And when we're doing something extremely small like this, uh, this is a good thing to have. And just all of this being all in the unit together, it would fit in this tin perfectly. Or it's got a little clip that you can clip it on. <clears throat> uh, I'd say it's fairly cheaply made. And... I personally carry a different flashlight. Uh, I'm actually in the process of getting, you know, a light that's rechargeable for solar and stuff. But <clears throat> once that happens, you know, I've had this thing for years, and I'm probably gonna break it apart and like super glue the the compass onto. The tin or the container uh, take out this signal mirror because it's really a perfect size for carrying and it does 
I mean, you could probably shave with it, but its main purpose is signal mirror. It's a really good size. Uh, and then even the, uh, you know, temperature gaze on here would probably be very useful to, you know, strip this down and, you know, save excess weight from just the housing of this. Uh, <clears throat> and it also doesn't matter what knife you're going to use. You know, I think this old case knife that I have is pretty darn perfect for this situation. Uh, but, and it's a nice, nice size and everything, but the other knife is a little bit smaller. It has a couple more features. Again, it just comes down to your personal preference. This knife is old as dirt, was fairly quality made, and will probably last, you know, giving it to my kids as a first knife kind of thing. Whereas this one was probably made in China, uh, is probably stamped together in some sort of factory, and might not last as long as we think it will last. And if they put who made it, they hit it very well. But probably made in China. A uh, <clears throat> couple of other things that I put in there is if you take any sort of medication, you know, getting a little, one of those small Ziploc bags, where, you know, bag about this size, and keeping a day or two's worth in there, probably pretty useful. If you don't take any medication, throwing some Tylenol, some Benadryl, uh, or maybe if you have a generic over-the-counter uh, antibiotic, throwing that in there will be useful. Uh, keeping one of these in there, this is an American Silver Eagle. One of the most recognized you know, one ounce coins in the world. You can keep generic in there, but it might not work. But, you know, right now these are 20 to $30. Um, and in a lot of these situations, I feel like this is going to be a lot more useful. I've already changed clothes. I had money in my pocket from our county fair. But it's going to be a lot more useful than... A $20 bill. Maybe. You don't know. Uh, but we're not adding excessive weight. Uh, I think it is completely illogical to carry a one ounce gold coin. Uh, and I've looked into doing uh, getting those like their 50 to 100 gram credit cards. You know, credit card size, <clears throat> and they're break apart almost like a Hershey's chocolate bar pieces of silver, and that would drop it down to being fifty to seventy five cents for each of those little bitty pieces. Uh, <clears throat> but the premium on those is really really high, and I I don't know about that yet. Uh, for y'all's, I'm at least gonna put a piece of ninety percent silver in there. Uh, Mostly because these are getting pretty expensive these days. Last couple of items that I think are useful is having some semblance of a sewing kit. And what I mean by that is a couple sewing needles, a little bitty thing of thread, maybe the thimble, but probably not. Uh, and that's about it. You don't need the scissors because you have a knife. Uh, but being able to repair your clothes uh, will probably be pretty important. At least in my opinion. Uh, and then the last item that I say should really go in one of these is going to be a piece of gum. A piece of hard candy. Some 
comfort item. You know, on the controversial side, putting a cigarette or two in there. Uh, it can be a bit more controversial, but I'm I'm not gonna go there. That's that's not my thought process. Uh, but having a small comfort item, I think, will be extremely important. Your small comfort item could be a shot of, you know, your favorite adult beverage. Uh, and you could make the argument that it's a, it's for cleaning wounds as well, or disinfecting something, uh, but that's not going to be in mine. Mine's going to have, you know, a lifesaver, a piece of gum, uh, <clears throat> it could be a small, uh, like Gatorade powder pack. Something that gives you a little bit of hope, puts a little smile on your face, or is your one item out of this whole thing that you're 100% willing to trade. Uh, the rest of these items, I really wouldn't do that. The rest of these items, you know, this is, as a prepper, you want the crap to hit the fan when you're at your home. Uh, you know, you've got your thousands and thousands of pounds of rice and beans and, you know, beef jerky and stuff like that. And your 20 firearms with your tens of thousands of rounds. And, you know, your room that could compete with a third world country hospital and your 50 people in your mag. You know, that's best case scenario behind 10 foot concrete walls. Then the next step down is a bug out bag or a get home bag where you're carrying between 20 and hopefully not more than 50 pounds uh, of stuff that will keep you going to get back to this castle. This is almost like a get to your car or get to your bug out bag thing. Or younger or older people or getting people started in prepping. Or for a 300 subscriber giveaway. Uh, and so this should not be your main idea of a prep. Uh, you know, spending your, you know, $40 to $50 to put this together it shouldn't be the end of your prepping. And this can be an ever-changing thing because, you know, society is very innovative. They're making things more lightweight. They're making things more durable. And they're making things in a more compact size. And with all of that... You know, I think this should be updated every six months. At least the piece of candy should be eaten once a month and replaced just so you've got a fresh piece of candy. Uh, but then after this whole thing is put together and said and done, you need to go test it. You need to make sure that the knife you're using, which I found this knife in my car earlier today, uh, it's the Smith & Wesson. Totally forgot about this knife. Started carrying it. When I started to sharpen this pencil, I figured out that the lock, I don't know if it doesn't work, if there's gunk in it. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's about a $15, $20 knife. But a no-locky knife is... Not something that I want to deal with. And even a locking knife that if I, you know, pull it back really hard and, you know, fiddle with, I'm, I would much rather use this than this. So, testing this gear is important. You know, pulling this knife out of my car today, I thought I had, you know, another one of my decent knives back. And it turns out that something is either broken on it, 
uh, or I need to clean it and, you know, hopefully just tighten something down. But the first time you use the gear in the survival tin or container shouldn't be when the crap does hit the fan. You should be well versed in using the things in here. So you should be able to catch a fish and know where to find bait to catch the fish with what you have here instead of yourself for a hundred dollar rod and reel. You should be able to start a fire with your lighter or your matches or your ferrocene rod or the little magnifying glass on here, which I'm going to try. Uh, but then the last thing that I'll say to add to this video, because this is half an hour long already and most of you probably are not watching at this point, is I got about 15 minutes worth of footage from work at the bushcraft camp and bug out location. So if you would like to see that, then I can go ahead and edit it up and put it out there. Uh, if not, I can hold on to it, post snippets on the Instagram, you can watch it there. Or I can hold on to it, and as I go out over the next uh, week or two, I can just add it into what I will film later on. But with that being said, if you liked this video, then leave a like. If you like what I'm doing with the channel, then please consider subscribing. And if you have a friend or family member that would benefit from the discussions that we have in this video, then share the link with this channel to them. And with that, catch you in the next one.